In order to continue my discussions on expansion, I want to discuss how matter can't move or expand faster than light. And going back to my PBS space-time video, Matt discussed how space-time expansion must happen everywhere for it to be true, but it doesn't happen in galaxies or stars or black holes. But the problem gets even worse in that it can't happen at the molecular level or the atomic level. The molecular bonds don't expand faster than light or the crystal lattice spacing doesn't expand faster than light. Orbital radii, the Bohr orbit, doesn't expand faster than light. Nuclear spacing between protons and neutrons in the nucleus doesn't expand faster than light. If it did, the nuclei would just blow apart. And protons, neutrons, and electrons, their radii don't expand faster than light. And when I talk about electron radii, I mean the Compton radius. None of these things can happen. And space between the galaxies, which Matt said could expand, is filled with dust, gas, plasma mostly, and just particles protons and electrons and neutrons floating in space. So in all these particles and their conglomerates, they're not expanding either in that local region of space. Which makes the idea of a universal space expanding everywhere even more ridiculous. And it's even worse that I say it can't expand faster than light, but it can't really expand at all. Because if you look at the physical constants, every physical constant is related to other physical constants. There's a whole bunch of different equations. And if you go through them, you can't change those relationships randomly and without breaking physics. The idea that these physical constants are tunable is nonsense, and I've done video on that. They are so finely structured that you have a, little, a few that can vary to make relativity work, but you can't vary it and get faster and light expansion to work. It just doesn't work. So matter doesn't expand local to matter. And so you'd have to extend Matt from PBS's argument that you have to have all the space between matter somehow still expanding while the matter itself doesn't expand, which Ah. Space expansion should be an example case of a crackpot theory. And then we have the speed of light itself. I was just watching a video by Sabina Hassenfelder when she talks about there might be faster than light travel. And she uses an argument about the Higgs field and about causality. But what she doesn't talk about is the actual cause of the speed of light limit, because if she did, she would have a much different video. And that seems to be a problem all along. The physicists talk about the speed of light without ever thinking about where the speed of light limit comes from. I mean, what what is it emergent from, and how does that relate to whether it can be exceeded or not? Since space, under the Big Bang model, has said to go on go from about 14 billion light year radius 13 and a half billion years ago from the first galaxies we're seeing to now being 93, 94 billion light year diameter, 46 billion year radius in just 13.5 billion years. So it requires that light is still, or the universe is still expanding faster than light. So matter would be have to move even faster in light all this time, including you and me. But that's not happening. And the issue behind it is that if we look in at electromagnetism, going back to Maxwell, 1860s, this was known, the speed of light is a function of permittivity and permeability of space, the electric and magnetic constant. That's how we calculate it. And we can think of the permittivity 
epsilon being the resistance to polarization. While we can think of mu, the magnetic constant, being the resistance to magnetization or rotation. And by rotation, I'm talking about self-induction, where if you have a charge move, quantum fluctuations rotate, and resistance to rotation is what restricts the motion of the body. That's where the speed of light limit comes from. And Dickey figured out in 57 that if you have a quantum field that's a polarizable field, that permittivity, permeability, and consequently the speed of light are emergent properties of the field. And I've gone on to show that every physical constant is, in that case, an emergency property, an emergent property of the quantum field. None of the physical constants are magic. No one waved their magic wand and went, poof, there's this physical constant. They're all emergent properties of the quantum field, or interrelated to the quantum field in such a way that they're fixed within the range of relativistic changes, as I said. So when you come to matter that's not charged, it still has the same speed light limit as matter with a charge. And even a body, whether it's charged or neutral, plus or minus a few electrons, has the same mass. So mass and the speed of light limit are the same, effectively, whether a body is charged or neutral. So it still comes down to the permittivity and permeability of the quantum field regulates the speed of light limit for neutral objects which is a necessary conclusion to reach in order to come up with an understanding of inertia, which is something else physicists ignore. They, they don't want to be bothered with trying to explain inertia. But it's right in front of us. Inertia has to be an interaction with the quantum field, or the speed of light limit for neutral matter wouldn't be the same. And the mass wouldn't be the same. So, you can only change the speed of light limit, make something go faster or slower, by changing the permittivity and permeability of the quantum field. And it's only possible to make things go faster if you can decrease the permittivity and permeability, which might be possible in a Casimir cavity. And this is called the Scharnhorst effect that's been proposed, that maybe in a very tiny cavity you can decrease the permittivity and permeability and increase the speed of light. But outside that limited Casimir cavity effect, there's no way to increase the speed of light in free space because it's limited by the quantum field, and the quantum field, per quantum field theory, has always been there. So the speed of light in a vacuum can't change as long as the quantum field is there and stays the same. And so when people discuss whether something can or cannot exceed the speed of light limit, then they have to go back to what are the mechanics behind it, the permittivity and permeability, and what are the mechanics behind permittivity and permeability. If you don't at least make an attempt to understand those things, you can't come up with a decent hypothesis. And just bantering about the Higgs field hasn't formed yet is you know, nonsense. You should be talking about has a quantum field formed yet? And that's another question for another video. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please like it, share it, and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more of my videos and to help with me with the algorithm so I get even more subscribers. And I do have some books from sale on my quantum field theory research and my particle theory research. I discuss it, this a little bit in those books. Um, so if you'd like to learn more about my research you can buy one of my books and that helps me out as well. And I have Patreon and PayPal supporters who I wish to thank. And to everyone, thanks for watching.